Welcome back. Uh, Hananiga Honors, 3.2 complex numbers. We are now going to get into a realm of numbers that you have never worked with before. In your study of mathematics, you have probably worked with all real numbers, which can be represented graphically on a real number line. In this lesson, the system of numbers is expanded to include what is called imaginary numbers. The real number and imaginary numbers compose the set of what is called a complex number. So this system, known as imaginary numbers, is an entire new world of mathematics that you guys have never seen before. So here we go. In, uh, not all quadratic equations have real number solutions. For example, x squared equals square root of 3 has no real solution because the square of any real number is never a negative. So you can't take the square root of a negative. Now you can. To overcome this problem, mathematicians created an expanded system of numbers known as the imaginary unit. This is the exact definition of an imaginary, an I i is equal to the square root of negative one anytime you're taking the square root of a negative you can take out an i for the imaginary this is also something that is very important if you ever have something that is i squared i squared is equal to negative one the imaginary unit i can be used to write the square root of any negative number so i'm going to do some examples here all right if r is a positive real number, then the square root of negative r is i square root of r. What that means is if I take the square root of a negative, I can automatically take an i out or the imaginary out and then just take the square root of r. Next one, if i square, then this becomes i squared, square root of r squared. Because i squared is negative 1 and the square root of r, so this would be negative r. So again, I, the two things you need to know, the square root of a negative is an imaginary, and i squared equals negative 1. So what would be the square root of negative 81? Well, i, and then the square root of 81 is 9. So the answer to this question, they always put the number first, kind of like when you go 3x, you don't say x3. So i, 9, i times 9 would be 9i. So anytime I see a radical, a square root, I shouldn't say radical, square root with a negative, you automatically take the i out, and then the negative is no longer under the square root. Now, simplify. I can do a factor tree. We talked about factor trees and taking out the pairs. There's a pair of twos and a two and a seven that doesn't have a pair. The i is usually located when writing this in front of the radical so 2i square root of 14. so the last one i would take the i out simplify looking for pairs so i'd have two square roots of three times what's outside would make negative 14i square root of three so again one more time if you're taking a square root of a negative, you can now take an I out as an imaginary answer. Complex numbers written in standard form is a number A plus BI, where A is a real part and BI is an imaginary part. So if you have an, what this is called a complex number. So we have a, if you have A equaling zero, it's just an imaginary. So I'm gonna explain this. If I had three I, that is just an imaginary number. If I have 7 plus 2i, this is a complex number. Two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di, are equal only if and only if a equals c and b equals d. What this means is if I have a complex number equal to another complex number, then the real part of the first number must be equal to the real part of the second number, and the imaginary parts must also be equal. So now, I can divide both sides by i, that gets rid of the i, and y would equal negative 20. I can divide both sides by 5, and x is equal to 7. 
So if you have a complex number equaling a complex number, then the real part equals the real part, and the imaginary portion equals the imaginary portion. Also, things I can do, I can add and subtract complex numbers. So if I, again, I'm going to add the real parts together, and I'm going to add the complex parts together, or excuse me, the imaginary parts together, just like you would add like terms. So nine, 2 plus 9i plus 11 minus i would be 13, because I'm adding the real parts, plus 8i, because I'm adding the imaginary parts. Now, when you're subtracting, you've got to make sure to subtract both. So 13 minus 8 would be 5. 4i minus 4i then would get rid of the imaginary. So all I would have is a real value. And the last one here, 16 minus 13 minus 6i plus 8i. I went ahead and distributed the negative. So 16 minus 13 is 3. Negative 6i and 8i make positive 2i. Electrical currents. Some of you might ask, well, where in the world would this be used? It's actually used in electricity, such as resistors, inductors, and capacitors. All oppose the flow of current. This opposition is called a resistance for resistors and the reactance for inductors and capacitors. Each of these quantities is measured in ohms. The symbol used for ohms is the omega symbol, the uppercase Greek letter. So when I am looking at a pattern here, I have resistors. Resistors are real values. Inductors, they're I, imaginary, and capacitors are a negative imaginary. So as we do these questions, we're going to need that little symbol to make sure we know which one is a resistor, which one is an inductor, and which one is a capacitor. The impedance for a series circuit is the sum of the impedance for the individual components. The resistor has a resistance of 5 ohms. So the resistance is 5. That's a positive. It's a real number. The impedance is, so its impedance is 5 ohms. The inductor has a reactance of 3 ohms. Now, so that would be 3i. And then the resistance, or the capacitor, so that's a negative 4i. And then we add all those up to get the circuit. So now, this is the resistance. That's the real number. So I'm going back and forth here. The next one's the inductor. So this would be the inductor. That's 10i. So this one's just 8. And the last one is the capacitor. And that's a negative. And so what would it be for this circuit if I take 8 plus 10i plus negative 12i? I would get 8 minus 2i. So that would be the answer for this particular circuit. We can also, if you can add and subtract complex numbers, you can multiply complex numbers. You can multiply two complex numbers by either using the distributive property or FOIL, just as you would when you were multiplying real numbers. So this one I'm going to distribute. Negative 15 times negative 15i. Let me try this again, 15i times negative 1, and then 15i times 2i. Now, this is a big red flag. You can never have an i squared. If you go back to the beginning, i squared equals negative 1. So negative 15i, 10 times negative 1. So negative 10 minus 15i, writing it as the real number first and the imaginary part second. Foil, first outer, inner, last. So 4 times 11, 4 times 8i. Negative 12 times 11. Uh, negative 12 times 8i. Oops, sorry, 132. Miss wrote there. Now, add like terms. So negative 132 plus 34 would be negative 88. And then negative 96 and 32 make negative 64i. Again, writing this as a complex number. Solving. 
x squared equals negative 121. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Right, this gets us into an issue. Anytime you take the square root of both sides, it's always a plus or minus. Remember, we talked about that in a previous lesson. Negative 121 would be 11 i. And I, maybe I should have shown that a little bit better. I could take the i out. And the square root of 121 is 11. And because you took the square root of both sides of an equation, it's plus or minus. So the next one, I'm going to subtract 25, negative 441, divide by 3. So 441 divided by 3 is 147 take the square root of both sides so I know it's going to be plus or minus I know I'm going to be able to take an I out and the square root of 147 comes out to be a decimal so now I need to see if there's any pairs involved so 147 divides by 3 and a pair of 7 so the answer to this question is plus or minus 7I square root of 3 Find the zeros. Whoops, I moved this out of the way. I need to move it back. Find the zeros. So now I'm going to make it equal zero. Divide by seven and take the square root. Anytime I take square root of both sides, plus or minus, take out the i, and you can't simplify the square root of 10. So the answer to this question is plus or minus i square root of 10. Your homework assignment is out of the book. If you have any questions, make sure you ask your teacher, and good luck.